Are you telling me I have to work right now? Can we just pretend I'm by the pool and you can be the pool boy? Can I be an indoor pool boy? I feel like there's no such thing as an indoor pool boy. If any of you are indoor pool boys, leave a comment below. What do I know about the life of pool boys? So let's take a new look at my kitty pool cake. I don't have a pool. In fact, the only pool I could have is a kiddie pool. So I caked one. I will say that I used my largest cake pans to bake this swimming pool cake. The largest size round cake pan you can get is 16 inches. I baked four of those. If you need a cake bigger than that, then they start to make sort of half moon pans and then you can put them together. Otherwise the cake will just take too long to bake. And even when you look at the 16 inch, you can see it really caramelizes around the outside a lot more than a small cake. But not to worry because I get to cut most of that away. Now, as with any cake, I always stress, when you're carving, the cake has to be cold. Sometimes we don't leave that in, even though I say it. It makes a huge difference when you're carving, if the crumb of the cake is nice and tight and firm and cold from the fridge. Some people even like to freeze cakes. Cold, 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 it will make your life easier and less messy. So I'm actually gonna level all of my cakes a little higher than that rounding to maintain that smooth, beveled edge. They agree. I need to bevel the edge all along the bottom of each cake. So I'm gonna carefully flip them over using cake boards and use a small serrated knife to create that same curve. And this way I have cakes that are rounded at the side. The next thing I need to do is shower them in simple syrup. Very important, especially with a cake of this size and pay attention to those edges. <sighs> I'm getting hot in the sun. Can I just have a break for a minute? Just talking about this cake is making me exhausted. Yes. Pool boy, where's my ice? Now I need to crumb coat all of these cakes. I'm using Italian meringue buttercream. Crumb coating is just to glue all the crumbs to the cake. It's a very thin layer. And then we're gonna put the cakes in the fridge to chill. So the next thing I need to do is ice all of these cakes using my invention to maintain that curve. It's very important. I've never seen a square kiddie pool. You know, my invention is what got me enough money to even have a pool. <laughs> now I just sit by the pool and when the pool boy says, Miss, how did you get all this money? I said, oh, it's my invention. A small piece of acetate cut into a square that I really didn't invent, but no one knows. I won't mention the class action lawsuits. Okay, so now. <laughs> now I can start to cover this cake. So for the bottom, what should I call it? Bubble, what do I call it? You know how it's kind of, yeah. So for the base bubble of the pool, I've decided to cover it in teal fondant. Instead of draping the fondant all the way over, because then I'd have a bunch of fondant between the cakes, I am going to wrap the fondant around. So make sure to measure the circumference of your cake, the height of your cake, which isn't very high at all, and then roll out the teal fondant a little bit longer and a little bit higher than you need it. The next thing I'm going to do is roll that fondant up on a French rolling pin or basically any kind of rolling pin that doesn't have handles that spin and then unravel it around the side of your cake. Sticking it to the side, use your hands to smooth it on. Use a large circle, whether it's a cake pan, a bowl, lay it on top and trim that fondant. You do wanna leave about an inch or an inch and a half of fondant on, along the top of the cake. Oh, it's my sunglasses. Are they getting in the way? Well, I guess my pool day is over now. I need a new pool boy. If anyone knows a, a good pool boy, please put his number below. If it happens to be Tom Hardy's number, I'm Bonus sure, yeah. point. So now we're gonna move on to the next layer of cake. Woo, and do I have big plans for this. So the next three bubbles, I want to be sprinkle patterned, inspired by the Hattie Cake It chair. First, I need to create all these sprinkles that you see with all the colors of fondant. So dark pink, white, teal. And then what I need to do now is roll out the pink fondant the same way I did for the teal fondant, right? Remember, circumference of the cake, a little higher than the cake. Sprinkle on some of these fondant sprinkles. I'm going to use a fondant smoother to first sort of press them on the top before I go over it with a rolling pin. If you go over 
over the rolling pin right away, the sprinkles will probably move and slide along the fondant. So that's why I'm taking the time to press them down in place first, then use the rolling pin, go over the fondant, and now once again, we're gonna roll up the fondant backward on the French rolling pin, unravel it onto the cake, trim all the good things. The scariest part about this is if your sprinkles are too dry, the sprinkles you created, you'll start to see them crack as you're rolling it out and you need to have them ready before you roll the pink because likewise, if you roll out that pink strip and then you make the sprinkles, you'll just have an elephant skin and that strip of fondant will be very dry. Who are you waving at? Me. You're creeping. She's creeping. I'm by the pool, Helena. I don't want to talk about cake batter. God, I have what one. is it now? <laughs> is this a bad time? Is the cake not baked this isn't yet? Ready at all. <laughs> <laughs> so now is the time when I stack it together. So teal bubble is on the pizza pan. Ice the top with buttercream to just match the level of fondant. Then I'm gonna carefully place the first sprinkle bubble. Next, I'm gonna place the second sprinkle bubble. This is tricky. You need a board to help you and you need to center it, but it's so big and heavy. So just take your time. And now I have to place the naked bubble, the final cake. Now I'm going to cut open the center of the pool. I wanna cut through two layers. So we have a total of four layers, naked, sprinkle, sprinkle, teal. I need to cut through the naked one and the first sprinkle layer. I'm gonna again lay something around on top. You can use a bowl, a plate, anything that's the right size. Now we need to carefully pull out this cake without wrecking the edges. So you can just sort of stab down into the cake and, and start to lift it out. It doesn't matter if that breaks. It's more important that you don't break the perimeter of the cake that you're leaving behind. Pull out that cake and then again go deeper and take out that second layer. And then I'm just going to use a small offset spatula to clean up any crumbs that are in there and crumb coat the sides so that the inner part that's just sort of raw chocolate, not raw, but bare chocolate cake at this point. And then I'm gonna chill the cake to let that firm up. And I didn't know whether it made more sense to dye the piping gel that I'm going to use as water, a very light, soft blue to give us the feeling of water. And then I thought maybe I should just treat it like a real pool and line the inside of the pool with a really pretty teal. And then that way that color will be reflected in the piping gel. So I need to roll out some teal. I rolled teal that was slightly lighter than the outside teal. I laid a cake board on top, wrapped the excess fondant around it, carefully picked it up, dropped it in, and then pulled up that excess fondant and smoothed it around the side, removed the cake board. Now I need to trim this fondant. What I ended up doing is putting a cake dummy inside, and then I put um, a plexi cake board on top, and then I used my sharp paring knife to cut the excess fondant all the way around the inside and just keep moving you know your little contraption around <laughs> until you go all the way around what do you think about pools that have colors that are not blue or white it's weird it's so weird you rarely see it and when you do you're very thrown off yeah. And then once again, we're going to go back to making that sprinkle pattern fondant, unravel that fondant around the cake, this time making sure it's enough to drop inside and meet the teal fondant we just put down. And again, we have to trim. You can use the same contraption to trim the fondant on the inside so that it meets the teal. And on the outside, we've gotta be really careful. We've gotta make sure we're tucking the fondant under the bubble and then trimming slowly. I like to use a paintbrush or even a slightly damp paintbrush as a smoother to press the fondant into that seam. Okay, now we're at the fun part. Water. Make sure to add enough piping gel that it's a little bit higher than the level of the teal fondant. I feel weird in this hat now. <laughs> Woof! And I want some sunshine. Okay, so. Now I wanna add some toys to the pool. Everyone I know who has a pool always has some sort of cool floaty in it. So I decided to make uh, just some balls, like beach balls, but just regular color, because we're not on the beach. The multicolored ball is only for the beach. Then I decided to make uh, like a floaty that looked like a rubber ducky, because rubber duckies are so cute. And then I put some shades on him, because he's super cool. I only hang out with the cool ducks. 
Ja. Can we redo the thumbnail? Can we get me in my hat and like put me in the pool? I absolutely can. All right, I like this. Done, <laughs> done. It actually held up, the, like the gel held up more than I thought. I thought it would just pour out and look like a complete mess. Now, can I get back to my pool day, please? Yes, please. Oh, God, please don't interrupt me. And can you do me a favor, Orhan? Can you get me some ice for this water, please? I have messages to check, thank you. And I'll see you all next week.